Hey everybody, I'm Lance Koike, and today we're going to do a quick one on a, a vocabulary term in energy systems development, resting heart rate. So your resting heart rate is like the lowest your heart, the lowest rate your heart will beat. So this is like first thing in the morning, I've had a good night's rest. I am, or you know, if you're testing, maybe you haven't had a good night's rest, but laying down on my back so that my blood doesn't have to really oppose gravity too much. Um, and so I have the, the least amount to overcome, the least force from my heart is necessary. So my heart will beat as slow as it will ever beat. Um, and with training, you can kind of lower it, but that is what I'm measuring. Generally, you're gonna take your heart rate for 30 seconds if you want to be pretty good about it, uh, 15 if you want to do it quickly, uh, well, six if you're working out. But these are, this is kind of, you know, maybe a minute if you want to be really good about it. But it's probably best to count it for 30 seconds and just double that number. Now, uh, what is a good resting heart rate? So my target that I'm usually looking for is less than 60 beats per minute, and that is pretty arbitrary. Some people are probably gonna do a little bit better, a little bit higher. Some people are gonna be freaky low. Um, but in general, as people get healthier, their resting heart rate stays lower. So I found that healthier people tend to be lower than 60 beats per minute. Um, so, okay, so what am I gonna use this for? Well, as I said, it's kind of an indicator of health. Um, but I can also use it as a, a proxy for cardiovascular health. So if my, uh, the tubes in my body, my capillaries, my blood vessels, if those are nice and open, they're not clogged with these fatty deposits in the arterial walls, then I don't have a lot of resistance in my body and I, have, I can have good flow, good blood flow throughout my body. So my heart isn't gonna have to overwork and it's less likely that I'm gonna have uh, myocardial infarction, heart attack, heart disease symptoms. Um, it's also going to be related to my heart not having to work as hard and my resting heart rate getting lower. So I can use that as an indicator to how healthy your, your heart actually is. Um, and it, you know, in general, it's a good indicator of long-term cardiovascular fitness. So that's what we're using it for. Um, you can measure it every day. Don't go crazy about it. You can measure it once a week if you want. Um, the last thing I will say is that it will fluctuate. It doesn't just always stay at this lowest rating, especially when you're kind of stressed out. Sometimes it gets a little bit higher. Um, that is not always true. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more tomorrow. But um, you can use that over the long term as an indicator for cardiovascular health. 